Hi, I'm Bob Wagner from You Cook with Chef Bob. I have the man behind Yellowtail Wines, the Reserve Yellowtail that we're doing today, the Pinot Grigio, John Casella. Thank you for coming. Thanks for being part of this. Thank you so much for inviting me. Better yet, thank you for making such incredible wines. And I'm excited. I've got a salmon dish, and it's movie month. We have to sit home and watch movies. We're going to have to, but you know what? It's one of those summer months. It's hot. I'm going to get in the air conditioning up here. It's very hot in the summertime. And we like watching movies, especially with my wife and daughter. And you know, it's one of those fun things that I don't, wanna, I don't want it to be too tough, but I also want it to be a little creative. I want to have some fun with it. And we're lucky enough that we can get great fresh salmon. And I think a lot of people want to be able to just go to the supermarket, buy product, come home, cook it, and make something fun. So usually you can find, let me show you real quick here. We've got our fresh salmon. We've got some uh, fresh watercress that I love watercress. Love that bite, sort of peppery uh, bite from the watercress. Got some fresh goat cheese, some diced shallots, some fresh cilantro. I love the herbal, I love that freshness of uh, cilantro in dressing. Some almonds, I want a little bit of nutty and I want a little bit of crunch. I like in a lot of dishes to have some, almost to have, a, have fun in your mouth. Whereas it's just all the same texture, that's not bad, but it's not the same as having something, having a little, oh my gosh, oh, what was that? Oh, I got a little bite of the cilantro and I got a little crunch from the almond. Uh, some cucumber, we're going to make a little, add that to our uh, vinaigrette. We have uh, some lime that we're going to do a vinaigrette with, and these incredible heirloom tomatoes that we find in Charleston, and you can find all over the country now. Incredible, fun uh, tomatoes. You want to find them about this size, which may not always be easy, but a lot of this, sometimes you'll find the pear tomatoes and things like that that are easy to skewer, and uh, hence the skewer. We're going to make a, uh, a little skewered salmon and put it over some watercress with a little simple vinaigrette that I'm hoping will go real well with the Pinot Grigio. Well, we're gonna get this guy. We're gonna we're gonna dice up our. Let's pull them over here like this. We're gonna go for pretty big, pretty big cubes. Let's go right. See right there was where the bones where they pulled the bones out. So we're gonna cut him there. And we're gonna go with some fairly. Salmon's got such a beautiful color, hasn't it? Just oh, looking at it makes you hungry. And the one and one great thing about when when you're grilling, I mean, it's a very fatty fish to begin with. But I'm fine with fat. Are you fine with fat? Certainly, fish oil is not a problem. <laughs> it's all good stuff. And, it'll, and one thing good about the salmon is it'll also hold together. I mean, it can flake when you really overcook it, but otherwise, for, for this kind of setup, this kind of skewer, you can do it ahead of time, put it in your fridge, and then uh, set this out here. And then what we're going to do, I've also got a, uh, a lime, and all I've done, let me show you real quick on this lime, what I've done, I've, I've, I've cut the skin off, and a lot of people don't eat limes, in this way, just show you a couple slices. You just go around the sides like that and get rid of the skin. But I love the flavor. And what I'm going to do with this guy, that's just to show you how we did it. We're going to cut some rounds because these guys are going to go on the skewer also. So let's give this a shot. We're going to grab, uh, grab our, our salmon piece. Do a little, oh, let me go the other way. Make it easier. Up. Lime on there. Go straight through our tomato. And now, wine, because you, you and you alone, your family has has brought Australian wines to this country. As obviously being the number one wine in this country in sales it, means you're doing something right, and it, you're. It was always the aim of my father to produce wines people liked, and what we did with all the yellowtail, all of them were just food friendly fun drinking wines. And we've got our Yellowtail Original and the Yellowtail Reserves. Now, in quality level, they're one step above the um, standard, but as far as pricing goes, there's only a few dollars difference between them, something like four or five dollars. Which is, I take my hat off to you because I've always said reserve means, oh, I better yes. reserve some of my paycheck alongside yeah. to be able to pay for it, and it's not true. But what are we looking for the, for the Pinot Grigio so or something like that? That's around $11. For the most, reserve? most sto stores, and the standard is about six or seven dollars. So it really depends on which state it's in or um, which store, but that's a price range it's in. Or a lot of people don't know what. What were we, what would we be looking for in a so Pinot Grigio for people really, that have no idea what a Pinot Grigio even is? There's a few is. different styles of white, and there's a Chardonnay style, which is sort of rich and buttery that goes with some foods. Mm -hmm. You've got a Pinot Grigio style. It's a style thing, different grape variety, fresh, sort of not strongly fruity, but slightly fruity and crisp. And so it's sort of almost a palate cleansing type drink and certainly a fun sort of summer drink, chilled and sitting on the veranda or, or chilled and with a meal. Fun stuff. I'm excited. Anyway, don't want to get off. We're going to add a little bit, 
a little bit of olive oil on this guy. Not too much because we don't want it to. Not too much because we don't want it to flame up. A little bit of salt and pepper over here, so you guys can see. Salt and pepper. Definitely want to uh, see what I did with my pepper here. Oh, there it is. Hey, if anybody goes away with anything on this dish, it's make sure you season it well enough. So a lot of people That's don't. Beautiful salt, isn't it? A lot of people don't season it up. Yeah, it is. A little bit of oil on the other side. Flight sea salt, is that? That's the that's the good stuff. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna let you place that on our uh, grill. So normally we'd be doing this on our barbecue at home, but we're lucky enough to have our own little barbecue here in the here in the kitchen. I'm right, gonna leave that there for just a minute or two. So the vinaigrette is simply a little lime, a little bit of lime juice. And one thing about citrus, whether it's a lime or a lemon, you want to wait until the last minute. This right now, if you could, if you can smell that, and you're going, wow, that's all those wonderful aromas of the lime. Oh, Whereas if we did this 20 minutes ago, yeah, yeah, it's all it gone. Does. So we got that, a little Spence. bit of a uh, little bit of lime juice, and I want a little bit of bite. So I want a little bit of shallots. Oh, they chopped shallots. Chopped shallots. Oh, so okay. just chopped real yeah. fine. Yeah. And then we're gonna. I'm gonna have you pull some leaves. Just just the leaves. Leave the stems. Just pull a little bit of leaves off the cilantro like that. So we've got our lime juice, our shallots, you know, our olive oil. Where would cooking be without olive oil? Where would it be? Especially for the Italian <laughs> families, right? <laughs> but I noticed that they use a lot more dishes other than Italian. Oh, this is true. This is true. I'm going to chop this guy up a little bit. I'm just going to rough chop it because I want to find, as I said, I want to, I want to find that, I want to find that herb rather than chopping it up too much. A lot of people worry about this, oh, my basil or my herbs got, you know, they turn black so quick. You know why? Sharp knife. Uh, rather than rather than slicing through uh, and actually cutting it, you're just, you're, just pinch, you're pinching it yep, is really yep, what you're doing. Yep, yep. So we're going to mix that up. And I'm going to grab a pair of tongs and see if you can pull our skewer. You put it back. Here you go. There you go. And we'll put them back on that, uh, put them back on that same plate. That should be okay. All right, then we're going to lay out our watercress. And if you've got baby greens, that works out, would work out great too. Any little baby salads. That's just something fun. Sitting around watching summer movies, and you can pr prepare this and have these guys sitting out ahead of time. All right, you know, before I do that, I also am going to put the cucumber in at the last second. That's going in our vinaigrette. So a lot of fresh things, which I'm, I'm assuming a little bit of acidity. And we're going to scoop this guy, see if that's not too hot. This guy's going to slide on top of our greens. Now, is there any nutty flavors in the Pinot Grigio at all? Are you going to find any? What there is is a hint of nut. Now, there's no oak flavor, but as the wine develops, it develops a sort of a nutty character. Oh, it's fun. A nutty, fruity character. Fun, 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 which is good. So I was thinking a little bit of, a little bit of almond in there, a little bit of nut, and then we're going... Uh, Lime, cucumber, cilantro, and one of this across, across the top. A little bit along the sides. Don't forget anything. And on the other side, if you wanted to, you could we, we could regrill some of these tomatoes if you wanted some more tomatoes. But you know, for me, just like that. That's it's our nice. salad. And then, honestly, I don't want a ton, but you know. Just every now and then you find Fresh. a yep. find a little nut, a little herb, a little fun stuff. There you go. Yeah, There's our grilled good. summer salad. You can sit uh, on your lap, sit on the couch, and uh -huh. pick at it and go to town and drink it. Now, what are we expecting out of this Pinot Grigio? What are, what are people going to find? What they'll find is a lighter, uh, not not a strongly fruity because it doesn't need to be. You don't want it to clash with the not food. Not a big oaky. You want a Sauvignon not Blanc. Not oaky, fairly neutral, slightly scented, just fun, crisp. The important thing is crispness, easy drinking wine. Cheers, another great looking dish. I'm great loving, loving, wine. loving the nose already. On the aftertaste. Oh my gosh, is that good? Mm. That's an amazing twelve dollar reserve wine. Now we need a good movie. And we're on our way. <laughs> and some good food.